New season, same shit from the Seattle Sounders, but the new signing of Pedro De La Vega is definitely going to be a game changer for us this season. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rave Green TV. And this is going to be your guys' review for the Seattle Sounders opening match of the 2024 MLS season against LAFC in LA. As I said, new season, same shit. We lose in LA. Steve Trundolo still hasn't lost against the Seattle Sounders. Brian just doesn't know what to do against LAFC since Trundolo has become the head coach. And just to, you know, start from the very beginning, I mean, we all know we had a bunch of injuries going into this match. I don't think whatsoever it's a valid excuse to be like, again, guys, it's been years of constantly we're like, oh, injuries this, injuries that. I'm not going to make injuries as part of the excuse. Yes, it definitely didn't help that we didn't have Fry or JP, but honestly, I don't really know what Thomas could have really done any better than fry would have done or like anything worse i don't think he's at all at fault in this game they scored two really good goals due to poor defense so i would blame it more on our defense and yes jp probably would have helped but i don't think the result would have been that much better i still think we would have lost the game because for the most part throughout the 90 minutes lafc were way more the dominant team throughout the majority of that game seattle I'll get on to why they got back into the game, but to get from to, to start from the very beginning, I liked the lineup. It was pretty close to the lineup that we all talked about that I put out thinking the Sounders should put out in this game, except the formation was slightly different. And I like that Brian was doing a two striker formation. I like it. We have not really done a two striker formation in a really long time. So I have to admit, I kind of liked it and I was a little bit optimistic, but for player for player, it was pretty much the exact same that I thought. The one difference being Obed Vargas, who he put in and most people would have put in. I personally would have put in Danny Leva, who has a little bit more experience against LAFC. And on top of that, has a bit more stature, has a bit more height, and has more of a better capabilities of progressing the ball forward with because he's a little bit of a bigger body than Obed. And what I was worried about with Obed was him getting a little bit lost in this game, possibly. You know, he doesn't have as big of a stature. He's a little bit more nimble, and I thought LAFC would overpower him in that midfield with Tillman and uh, Sanchez and Atuesta, and that's kind of what happened. Obed was pretty much non-existent and actually played pretty badly, arguably one of his worst games. But again, not the sole reason why we lost the game, but that's definitely something to touch upon. Beginning of the game, I mean, we had the golden... I mean, it's crazy. It was almost a carbon copy of... The playoff match, Morris gets a golden chance, semi, obviously the chance he got against LAFC in the playoffs was a lot better of a chance compared to this one, but again, gets played through on goal by Christian Roldan, the LAFC defender tries to poke it, but the ball actually, if anything, gets into his stride, Morris has a pretty good look against Hugo Lloris and blasts it right at him. If Morris wants to be the main striker for the Sounders, all season, or it should be in some people's eyes, in some pundits' eyes, in some of your guys' eyes, if you guys want him to be the striker, that those moments should be his bread and butter for this team. Those are chances he has to take. And what I've been preaching for years after years, he doesn't take his opportunities. He needs a 1,000 opportunities to convert one goal, and he got a golden opportunity. He didn't take it. And honestly, I think part of that was the reason why the game changed because say if he scores that, I think we would feel a lot more comfortable in the game. We're not going to get many opportunities, which the Sounders obviously didn't. You have to take every single one of them. And that is why I personally never rated Morris as the Sounders striker Definitely not throughout an entirety of a season. Yes, I understand maybe in a depth chart standpoint, if we have a few injuries in the striker position, sure, play him up top, try that out as a different option, a different tactic in certain games. But as the striker for entirety of the season, no, the, it, he's not consistent enough. He He's not as clinical enough. And it shows again here. He has an opportunity. He screws the pooch. And I think most fans can agree. It's getting frustrating. My guy's a six-year veteran in MLS. Those are the moments as a striker that's the that should be a striker's bread and butter. When defenses have lapses in judgment, shut down early on in the game, we get a golden ticket, you got to take that. Most of the lethal strikers, the top-end strikers in the league, would be taking that opportunity. But he fluffed it. Nonetheless, LAFC then have... Most of the possession pretty much dominate the Sounders for the most part. 
it gets a little bit chippy as well. The refereeing wasn't fantastic, but again, I'm not going to make these this just kind of like poor man's excuse. The referee cost us the game. Yes, there were some pretty bad calls for the Sounders, but nothing like game changing. Like he gave the penalty in the end for the Sounders, but again, I don't want to jump the gun too much. They dominate possession. They hit the crossbar a couple of times. They're pretty unlucky not to have scored early on. Then Tillman scores a really nice volley right before the half. Worst putt. I mean, worst case scenario, worst possible thing to happen for the Sounders is conceding a goal right before halftime. Second half starts, same thing pretty much as majority of the first half. LAFC absolutely shafting, pooping on the Sounders. Buwanga absolutely was terrorizing the Sounders defense, especially in the first half. He was all over our defense. We looked so terrorized. But big shout out, I want to say, on top of another player that I'll bring up who I already alluded to early on in this video is Nathan. I thought he played. He would do every tackle, every moment. He was pumping his fist. He was getting in there. I love the passion, and I love what he brought in. Something different. And in my opinion, in Jackson Reagan's eyes, he Jackson Reagan had an okay game. He's got to be looking over his shoulders. And maybe the same thing with Yamar. Nathan's hungry and ready. I mean, he had a goal line clearance. He saved a great opportunity that Buonga created, rounding Thomas. Clears it off the line. I think Nathan had a really good game. The signings, the new signings that came in to play today, minus Musovsky, were really, really good. And that's a big shout-out to Weibel because it shows how his new additions were actually pretty good additions and maybe also might show how our squad is dry and outdated and we might need more new signings. But again, that's, again, a whole other video, a whole other discussion that I've brought up in the past, and we'll probably bring up more in the future. But Nathan definitely was a brick wall was something different, a breath of fresh air in that defensive line for sure. By far, I think our best defender. I don't know if you guys agree with me. Let me know on that part. But nonetheless, second half starts, LAC pump on the pressure. I mean, they're absolutely battering the Sounders at this point. Bogush scores another banger against us. I mean, my guy doesn't score many goals, but he always scores against the Sounders. Unfortunate, but yeah, Bogush then gets the goal. Brian finally makes subs, and it looks like Rowlery Diaz is already injured. Based off of reports, based off what we saw, Raul, game one, already hurt. I have to say this, guys. Whoever you are defending Raul Ruiz Diaz, you got to stop. He's not the guy anymore. I'm getting tired. I mean, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. And I'm going to use that again later on in this video. But Raul Ruiz Diaz, Every single season, we're like, he could be a top-class striker if he doesn't get injured. He always is going to get injured. And the injuries keep piling on with age. He's already injured. I'm done with Raul. I'm going to flat out say it. If his injury is something serious, if they pull him out due to precaution, that's good, I guess. But based off of what I'm seeing, if it is true that he is injured already, I'd pull the plug. This is just dumb. Game one, already hurt? Ah, man. Raul Ruiz Diaz. He's just the gift that keeps on giving with injuries. I'm done with him. And if you're still defending him, that he's a top-class player or can still possibly do it for us if he's injury-free and whatnot, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself honestly, he, you're lying to yourself. You are clearly lying to yourself. You are just blinded by your Sounders love in this instance, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Raul Ruiz Diaz, Dunzo, Finito. Musovsky comes on. Cody Baker comes on. And then the long-awaited... Pedro De La Vega comes on for Liao Chu, who in my opinion was pretty ineffective for the most part in this game. And he shows levels to everybody on this pitch. He changes the game. New season, same shit, but Pedro De La Vega was the reason this match changed in favor of the Sounders. As soon as he came on, the aura, the passion, the movement, the ability, he was some a breath of absolute fresh air offensively he was a, he was like an a team player and it seemed like he was there to help out the c team everyone else that was on the field in my opinion he was a, he just he totally changed the game like i just said he changed the game for the sounders morris gets put through on goal i don't know why he doesn't shoot it he tries to cut it back which was so bizarre to me and in my opinion i think morris gets lucky with Long just being an absolute bonehead and just lunging in to tr like and just absolutely cleans him out. Referee takes way too long to look at that. That was a stonewall penalty. And what I love so much about this penalty moment was Pedro De La Vega. Yes, this is an intimidating atmosphere at BMO Stadium against a 
MLS Cup finalist team. Two years ago's winner. Last year's final. LAFC. He steps up against World Cup champion goalkeeper Hugo Lloris. Slots it cool, calm, collective. Sends him the other way. This guy, he's going to be something special. I know it's just a penalty, but it's just like these small things you're noticing on the field, how he's making a difference. He's clearly a class above everyone else on the field. He's clearly a class above Liao Chu. How he can change a game. That's the type of player we were hoping Liao Chu would be, but Pedro De La Vega is. I mean, my goodness. I, I'm sorry, but to all the Liao Chu fanboys, lovers, I mean, dude, Pedro De La Vega, it's, it, it's really making it look like us not accepting that Fluminense deal. I know it's early on to say, but based off of this and kind of my own intuition and what I think, they we're looking really silly not to have taken that Fluminense deal because I don't see how Pedro De La Vega doesn't start for the Sounders. Every single game, he is fit and ready to play. I just don't see it. In these tough games, Liao Chu, just like in the playoffs last year and just like today, he ghosted. He didn't really do much. He didn't offer anything. But when De La Vega comes on, he's never stepped foot in an MLS match. Chu is now one year, two years deep in his MLS career with us. And De La Vega, first, from the get-go, just breeds confidence, penetration, offensive creativity, changing the game, grabbing the game by the scruff of the neck. You can see he has that. It just shows he loves it. He gets so chippy, he was getting stuck in in every single tackle. He changed the game for the Sounders. Absolutely changed the game. I don't see how Liao Chu gets on the field if we have a guy like De La Vega who is doing what we hoped Chu would do, and I think we look kind of silly because of that. But nonetheless, De La Vega scores the penalty. We are now on the front foot because De La Vega is like, you know what, guys? We've played like absolute shit to this game, but I will grab you guys and let's get back into it. And that's what he did. He offered something completely different, a breath of fresh air to our offense. And it seemed like as weird as it was for those last like maybe 15 to 20 minutes, I thought the Sounders could have pulled out a draw there. Because it was a comp it was a night and day different team when De La Vega's not on the field and then when he was. He breathes hope into this offense. It was ridiculous. I don't, I can't quite put my finger on it, but it was just like night and day. We were so much better when De La Vega was on the field. Sadly, we weren't able to create anything. We, as I said, we only really had the penalty and the Morris chance early on. We weren't able to create anything. We lose to LAFC. Positives definitely being Nathan and De La Vega. Negatives being this team is, it's old, man. We're already having five up to, I mean, up to five injuries to starting level players, a possibility of already having five starters out before the seasons even started is ridiculous. As I mentioned early on, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting something different. The, the bring up the excuse of, oh, this is the first game of the season. We need to let the team get rolling or gelled in. No, the only difference from the team today to when we played LAFC in our final match of last season was Nathan and De La Vega. And funnily enough, they don't seem like they need much gelding time because they were by far our better players in today's match. I don't want to hear that excuse. Oh, it's but Sean, it's the first game. You can't be this harsh on the team. The team's no different. This is the same team we pretty much have had since 2020. It's been three years. There's no gelding. There's no experience that's needed. How are the new guys... The ones making the difference in this game. Because one, they're younger. Two, they're hungrier. Three, because th this team, it's stale. It's old. It clearly needs more of a refresh. It just shows when the new players are coming in, making such a massive difference, you need to make more signings. And you need to get rid of players that aren't making that change, are not leveling up. Rui Diaz already hurt from game one. Morris doing the same shit, missing good chances. Liao Chu, not really that effective unless we're playing against struggling sporting Kansas City who can't score a single goal or get a win. And same with Jordan. It needs to be better from those players, but it's not. Guys, as I said, definition of insanity. Doing the same thing, expecting something different. These guys aren't going to cut it. So I'm hoping... With what De La Vega brings, what Nathan brings. I mean, Taylor Twelman was talking about it in the commentary for today's game. If things don't change offensively from us, specifically from the striker department, I wouldn't be surprised if the Sounders try to dip their toes in the, in the summer window to bring in a striker. And it's already kind of looking like it.
We play against Austin at our home opener next week. They are one of the favorites to be one of the bottom teams in the Western Conference. Even Austin fans are not that optimistic about their team this season. We've only ever lost to Austin FC once, which was at home last season. And I'll have a preview out with the boys from We Are Austin TV. So that will be a really good video for you all to watch. That has to be a big win for us. If you want to be on the fan side, because if we don't get a win against Austin at home, which should be an easy three points, there's going to be a lot of conversations to start off this season and be like, what is going on with this team? You guys had all this confidence in this group of players that things will be different, which I kind of saw through and thought it was kind of just horse shit. And you brought in these guys who are so far looking pretty good in Nathan and De La Vega. Musovsky, I will say, didn't get many touches, but he kind of was ineffective in the game. But in regards to the two big pieces that I knew were going to hopefully be game changers for us are looking like it so far. There's going to be question marks if we don't do something in this home opening match against Austin. And that that's going to come down to Brian. That's going to be coming down to these veteran players on our team that need to prove themselves that they still deserve a spot in this team. Because if we don't win against Austin, if we don't win, if we get no wins from our first two matches, especially the Austin one, I think more fans realistically didn't think we would pull out with a win in LAFC, but a draw was kind of realistic. There's going to be question marks. Obviously, it doesn't matter how you start, but it's, what matters the most is how you finish in MLS. That is the truth. But we have a team that can easily at least start off decently to start the season. We shouldn't be getting clobbered against LAFC. We did get clobbered if it wasn't for De La Vega. And we should be beating Austin FC at home. But we'll find out. But big shout out to end this on a positive note to De La Vega, to Nathan. Those guys were absolute studs. And as well, I do want to say big shout out to Andrew Thomas because I don't think he actually had a bad game. He did everything he had to do. He wasn't able to save the two bangers LAFC had. I don't think it would have been any different like whatsoever if Fry started the game versus him. I think he did what he had to do. He was commanding for crosses. He caught. He didn't spill a single shot when it was right at him, which I thought for someone that has not played a single minute in MLS play before, I think he was pretty solid. So, yeah, you guys let me know in the comments down below what was your guys' thoughts in today's match. Let me know what your guys' hopes are for the upcoming match against Austin. Just And as well, to all the points that I brought up, let me know your guys' thoughts. But boys and girls, I hope you all have a lovely day.